Hello there again, YouTubers and guys on it. Uh, this is probably going to be the last uh, vid in this series, which I think should be number six, on the uh, trap of uh, Zeitgeist. And on the last video, I was touching on the importance of blind faith and the importance in uh, what we put our blind faith in because blind faith is basically just a tool and it is basically the power of belief. Same reason a person can be hypnotically introduced to a, uh, uh, a state of hypnotics uh, is a belief system. It's the only power that someone who can hypnotize you has over you is belief. As in the belief this guy has the power to do it. So, uh, blind uh, faith and belief really truly walk hand in hand. Just as we can place our belief in the wrong entity, uh, we can also place our, uh, just as we place our faith in, the, we can place our faith in the wrong entity, we can also put our belief in the wrong entity. And that's where we get in trouble. So. I'm convinced that uh, faith is the only ship off of this rock. It's the only way out of uh, out of here and to get to uh, God. Faith uh, is going to be the ship that removes us from uh, the troubles of this life. Uh, to the Zeitgeist movie, uh, basically this series is... Uh, is uh, sharing some ideas about uh, uh, movies basically constructed by uh, what I know to be as witches, which uh, a witch is somebody who wants to change somebody else's devout faith from one thing to another thing. And in, uh, in the movie, something that really struck me hard when I watched it, and I don't know where at on the counter in the movie it is, and I think he, he confronts it twice, once through the comedian of, I think the guy, one of the guys' name is Bill Hicks. I think it was George Carlin and Bill Hicks was the two comedians used for parts in that, in that movie. And the guy confronts through that comedian as well as, uh, I think he mentioned something about it, about God, uh, the reason for uh, Satan's... Uh, uh, stories to be told down through history was the fact that uh, God wanted to test us and they instantly made a mockery and fun at that as if that was uh, a ridiculous notion when it is in fact uh, the reason that these types of things happen now would it be so hard for uh, the devil to uh, in place these stories within our history of all these figures with the same story of Jesus Christ. Well, let's take a look at it and not just breeze over it the way the uh, writers of uh, Zeitgeist want us to do. We have God who has created the story and has given us the book of uh, first five books, Benedict and Moses. He's writing the books early in the early in the stage, early in the game, and uh, God says, "I've given you these stars for signs." Now it don't take much of a genius to figure out that what that means is that everything happens in the stars. It's going to be like a likeness for what's going to happen here on Earth. What came first, the, the chicken or the egg? We can think about that question all that matters. But the main thing we need to think about, does it really the hell matter that much? So anyway, we got the devil now. He's, he's reading these scriptures and he's understanding and what God is saying that what's going to happen in the heavens is, you know, a likeness for what's going to happen here. So would it be so hard for the devil to muddy up those waters by creating many scenarios to uh, one sign of the heavens? which is the, uh, you know, the, the sun setting in the Virgo and the, 
and the uh, positions where it looks like the sun going down in the into the womb of uh, a virgin and then going into the uh, what is known as the southern crooks or the southern cross and uh, going to stay there for three days and then rise I mean it don't take a rocket science to uh, a rocket scientist to figure that out so you know then the devil can very much at, uh, at God's allowance uh, let all these stories from all these small G's gods uh, be born from that notion. Uh, every, you know, 100 years ago, here's another one popping up, uh, resembling that. You know, the devil, of course, always trying to play God's Savior. Always trying to give the people the fulfillment of that sign before and after God would give us the true fulfillment of those signs. I mean, it's really hard to, to notion that if the devil is going to deceive us, he's got to at least play the part that we think Jesus Christ is going to play. So naturally, would he uh, do the things that God is telling us Jesus is going to do and fulfill? And the answer is naturally, of course, yes. You don't have to be a real smart guy to figure out that the devil is always trying to pretend to be uh, the savior. Hell, the half of the book is about, you know, the Satan God is wanting to stand in and play God's part. Stand in and have the world worship him. The only way to get him to worship him is by uh, deceiveness. He has to deceive the people. So, uh, and then again, the humor is an, is an open channel, just like music is. And the guy makes uh, this comment about, you know, that's the Christian's scapegoat they like to use as well as the test. And then he brings up some sound bites of Bill Hicks saying it in a very funny, a very acceptable way to where it rides in on the coattails of the joke. Uh, because your humor can accept that. Because if you say something funny, it just gets inducted in your brain whether you want it to or not. Because it's funny. It just passes all the gates of of uh, 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 caution and whatnot, just, just cruises right through there, just like it, things do with music, imagery, and so forth. And uh, the guy could have, if he was being uh, uh, unobjective, he could have put up, you know, uh, that argument. He could have showed some of his nice imagery and some of his comedians going, saying something going the other way, or or put up some of his photos and talked about them for a while, but that's not what he did. Because he don't want you thinking about the possibility that God is, in fact, testing us. Makes no sense to him. Because to a person that doesn't believe in Christ anymore, uh, they resent the fact that, that they're here by way of a test. Even a lot of people who believe in loving Jesus Christ resent the fact that they're born uh, evil you know, they're born uh, of an evil uh, station, and that we have to rise above that. Yeah, a Christian might just soon say, "Well, you know, hell, why didn't God just create us good?" And we wouldn't have to go through the trials and tribulations of death and so forth. And the reason that attitude takes place by not only people who created the Zeitgeist movie, but also a lot of Christians, is that this we're coming in late at the halftime. The game's already half been played. Oh, something has happened. There was a time before this one. The book is plain in that in many areas. Uh, you know, it's the funny thing about uh, uh, Shepherd's Chapel students. If if you bring up, uh, you know, the first earth age, uh, it's all good and good and well because the old man taught us that, you know, in uh, the elementary stages. But if you bring up the gap theory. Uh, you get a raised eyebrow because you know they don't really want to accept the gap theory and, and really you have to understand that the first earth age is that gap theory and I guess the gap theory has been kind of ridiculed by so many authors and so many books and so many scholars that uh, and because it's held by so many different uh, views and religions is why it's not just a shepherd's chapel thing and it's always got a different twist a different uh, uh, a different uh, flavor, if you will, for uh, 
so many different religions and things. But the gap theory is very much true. There was a time that we do not remember. And the gap being in the first uh, book of Genesis, as in the world uh, was created, uh, uh, and the, the old word was uh, Utu of Uhu, which uh, is to say uh, it, 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 uh, it came to uh, desolation. To uh, uh, And Isaiah tells you that God never created anything in that state. It had to go to that state. Uh, so like in the very first part of Genesis, God states that he created the world and then he like had to raise it from this desolate state. And the gap was God created this world and then this whole big ass story happened about, you know, Satan taking over and, and having a political fun fest trying to get God's job. So many people followed Satan and so many people didn't. And then the world was, uh, was uh, wiped out with the first flood. The catabol, as the old man teaches us. And then after that, we get to the point, right back in Genesis 3, where, you know, we come out of that state. So, uh, the Zeitgeist people, even though they do know of the gap theory, and they do know of the, uh, uh, the possibility of that happening, uh, they will not accept it. Because they'd rather think God's an asshole that's, you know, creating us, uh, putting us in a prison, creating us for his fun and pleasure of watching us grow from dead things to live things. And that ain't the case. The case is that God created us alive, and we became dead. We became utu vuhu. We became that in that state in need of salvation. Because, you know... God had rules back in the first age. God said it. And think in terms, of, and the best way to understand this for the people who do watch Zeitgeist and have this this uh, frame of mind, think in terms of you playing the part of God so you can really understand the dilemma that God is left with. Uh, God created uh, you just like you created your sons and daughters. And, you know, some of those sons and daughters, one or two of them, has uh, gone completely batshit and does not want to follow anything you want to say and they want to be dope heads and go do crack on the streets and listen to this evil notion of relying on drugs and sin and hatred and you finally lay down the law and said look if, if you you keep this up I'm gonna I'm gonna kick your, your butt out of this house and uh, lay down this law and because you are the head of that household what you said has to matter so they break the law again time and time and you finally have to kick them out now in God's term he's talking about if, if you break the laws of this house I'm gonna to have to take you out and God's house is life and being taken out of God's house is death so so God had to bring us to a state of death as he said and you can't go back on his word just like the king can't go back on his word because once you do that, then you open the door for doubt and so forth. So now, if you had to do that to your child, let's say uh, if you had to bring your child to death, which in which is you kicking him out of the house, but you know it's going back to the crack dealers and the, the sin where he's going to naturally have to die. So you are, in a sense, kicking him out into de death. If you had to do that, and means how you're made in God's image, God's probably going to think this thought about it. Wouldn't you do any and everything in your power to get that child back? I mean, that's what love is, right? So, you can kick this child out of the house in the hopes that the death is going to teach him a lesson. And I think that's very much exactly what has happened with us and God. I mean, I think we put God in this horrible, terrible place that we forced his hand uh, to put us here in these flesh bodies. And in a way for God to fulfill what he said he was going to do back in the old age and in a way that he can also give us another chance to come back to his house to come back to life so it's, you know, that's what these people don't get they like to point a finger and blame God for the injustice of the world and God is incapable of injustice of the world he's incapable of injustice of any kind he's only capable of justice and righteousness it's us who's trying to tune ourselves to that thing so that we can someday be presentable to God. 
Now, the people that wrote Zeitgeist don't want you to know that because they like pointing the finger and they like making God out to be some kind of prison master because it, it, uh, it furthers along their desire to bring the world to chaos because from this chaos they're going to rise in power. So uh, when you see that in that movie and that part where they just kind of cruise over the things that deserve deep thought that we can gain some uh, sight, some clarity, some understanding on uh, this, this, the, uh, the system of how this whole thing came to be. And we don't have to think very hard and long to come up with scenarios uh, that, uh, that could be reasoned for why we're here in this situation. And I think pretty much in all of them, if your heart is true, you're going to come to the uh, a conclusion that it's our fault that we're here and not God. But by the same uh, same note, it's a blessing that we're here because we have a chance, uh, which is something more than the people who made Zeitgeist is willing to give the people of this world. Uh, God is giving us a chance, and that is the reason that there are so many stories back like in the time of Ra and all the old ancient Greek stories that mimic Jesus Christ because we have a chance. God wanted us to have that chance to test our faith, to grow our faith, and to metamorphosize ourselves into something that is respectable enough that we can be in the presence of God. Again, because God has given us that chance. So uh, it does make perfect sense that these things and the, all these stories of, uh, of uh, that come out of the zeitgeist type uh, uh, ideology uh, is very much a test for the Christian and if you ain't as to me I think it's the shaking and if you're not careful uh, it's going to shake your ass right out of that tree so uh, I think it's important uh, to first look with love and then look with the mind and you have to look with both of them if you can uh, you have no business uh, researching and studying these types of things on the internet that can get your mind uh, uh, turned uh, uh, against Jesus Christ. But anyway, I wanted to I wanted to confront that uh, though it was a small phrase in that movie. It's a very important. And it, I noticed all of the things that had to do with uh, Christ that uh, in a positive light, the guy just kind of cruised right over those because that's how a witch is uh, a witch I, uh, teaches. That's how one of his signs that you can look for to know when you're dealing with a witch. Now I, I've talked about a witch a lot in these vids on these movies and primarily because uh, I think it's important because I don't think people really understand what witches are and what's more important than that I really don't think that people that are witches know they're witches uh, I think uh, uh, they just think that there's you know they're smart and they have high, haughty eyes and the haughty thoughts where they're haughty as in they raise themselves above the masses us little dumbass Christians down here who's struggling to find our way and uh, I think that uh, that is what a witch is and does. And now there's other uh, uh, talks about witches throughout the scriptures. And if you realize, you know, most of them are really just former seers, seers of the former things. Pharmacies, what we have today. People who use drugs to gain insight, uh, uh, to gain certain knowledge is always knowledge. Because guess what? You don't use drugs to gain love and compassion, the things that Christ is trying to instill. And if you use that shit to get smart, you want to see things. You want to know things that other people don't know. So you want to get into this vision vision world and in tune to it. So I think it, it very much, in, uh, the things are very much tied together. The, the thought process of what makes a witch a witch. And the old witch is what God was telling us an old witch was back in the old days. Somebody who had the answers. And God knows, don't these people on YouTube all seem to have the answers. That's trying to answer you right away from Christ. Okay, gang. I wanted. I think. I guess I've talked enough about this. Uh, this subject of the Zeitgeist and this movement. Uh, this keeping our eyes off of Christ and putting our eyes on them. Very important. Uh, very important subject. Is why I wanted to confront. And uh, I hope. I know this is a long-winded uh, series. I appreciate. It. Thank you guys for for suffering through it. But I just felt led to to share some of these thoughts and views. Uh, with whoever may come across this uh, video, so I put Zeitgeist in the title in hopes that maybe somebody who did watch the Zeitgeist uh, uh, movies that's brought some confusion, some negativity from it, 
may at least consider some of the things, the thoughts that I have on it in the hopes that it may be a help to somebody. So I uh, appreciate it. Uh, love you guys and uh, everybody. Uh, we'll see you next time. Take it easy.